friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, well, I've been in a little bit of a reading slump. I don't know if you guys can tell. And unfortunately, my reading slump has been geared a lot toward fantasy. And if you guys are new, if you're new to this channel, I read a lot of fantasy. So a lot of my TBR is fantasy. Surprise! So I have chosen some books that I would like to get to. Some of them I own, some of them I don't own, that are romance because that has been helping me get out of my reading slump also oddly enough horror has been too so i guess it's a good thing that it's almost halloween and that i am hosting a halloween readathon i guess that helps balance things out but here's to hoping that i'll be able to get a chance to catch up on my good reads because right now i am eight books behind let's just get in the video but if you like these kinds of videos or you want me to do a follow-up to see if i've read any of the books on this video let me know and i can always do that i love doing follow-up videos so the first book i've actually been wanting to read and i do own a copy of this i just didn't feel like getting it out of my shelves but that is part of your world by abby jimenez i have heard amazing things about these books so i would love like to see what is going on about this author specifically and whether or not I will also enjoy her writing. I have a feeling I will. My two friends have seemed to really enjoy her writing and I feel like when they like it, I tend to like it. But this, I'm just gonna read from the description because I don't have it off the top of my head. But after a wild bet gourmet grilled cheese sandwich and a cuddle with a baby goat, Alexis Montgomery has had her world turned upside down. The cause? Daniel Grant, a ridiculously hot carpenter who's 10 years younger than her and as casual as they come. The complete opposite of sophisticated city girl Alexis. And yet their chemistry is undeniable. While her, while her ultra wealthy parents want her to carry on the family legacy of world renowned surgeons, Alexis doesn't need the glory or fame. She's fine with being a mere ER doctor. And every minute she spends with Daniel, and the tight knit town where he lives, she's discovering just what's really important. Yet letting their relationship become anything more than a short term fling would mean turning her back on people and giving up the opportunity to help thousands of people. Bringing Daniel into her world is just impossible, and yet she can't just give up the joy she's found with him either. With so many differences between them, how can Alexis possibly choose between her world and his? Again, I have heard amazing things about Yours Truly, which is kind of the sequel or the companion novel to this. I think it's a companion series, but I'm very intrigued to see how this book is just because I haven't heard a ton about it. Everyone always raves about um, Yours Truly, but never about part of your world, so I'm very interested and I hope I'll be able to read it. You'll see it in an upcoming TBR for a certain um, readathon that I am hosting. If you're interested at all, I'll leave the link to the announcement video with all the prompts down below so you can always go ahead and check that out. The next one is an Emily Henry book. I have read two or three. I have read two Emily Henry books this year and they have both been five stars for me. I have really enjoyed them. So I'm really hoping that the third book, this book would also be a five stars, but I know everyone seems to have a different um, like tier ranking system. So maybe when I get through the Emily Henry books, I will tier rank my favorites. But this one is The People We Meet on Vacation, and again, I'm going to read the description because I don't have them memorized. But this is two friends, ten summer trips, one last chance to fall in love. Poppy and Alex, Alex and Poppy, they have nothing in common. She's a wild child, he wears khakis, she has insatiable wanderlust, he prefers to stay home with a book. And somehow, ever since a faithful car shared home from college many years ago, they are the very best of friends. For most of the year, they live far apart, she's in New York City, and he's in their small hometown. But every summer for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together until two years ago when they ruined everything. They haven't spoken since. Poppy has everything she should want, but she's stuck in a rut. When someone asks when she was last truly happy, she knows without a doubt it was that it was on that ill-fated final trip with Alex. And so she decides to convince her best friend to take one more vacation together, lay everything on the table, make it all right. Miraculously, he agrees. Now she has a week to fix everything. If she could only get around the one big truth that has always stood quietly in the middle of their seemingly perfect relationship, what could possibly go wrong? This sounds really cute. I'm always a fan of like friends to lovers in a in like a contemporary setting. I I rarely feel like friends to lovers in my brain works out very well in a fantastical setting just because there's so much going on and I'm like, yeah, you're in a war and you're separated at birth. You're separated when you were 10, but you're still best friends somehow even though you have no idea where the other person is and you're trying to communicate but you can't and it's just like it's a lot so i think enemies to lovers works really well fantas fantastical wise and then 
um, Friends of Silver's works really well in contemporary fashion. Super excited for this. Again, I've read Beach Read and then Happy Place, and both those books have been amazing reads, and I've absolutely adored them. So I'm really hoping that People Who Meet on Vacation is going to be one of those books. So... We'll report back and find out. The next one is Flawless by Elsie Silver. This is the first in a series, like a spin-off series, I think. And again, this is the synopsis from Goodreads, and it's, the rules were simple, keep my hands off his daughter and stay out of trouble, but now I'm stuck with her and there's only one bed. Oh well, rules are meant to be made to be broken, aren't they? I'm the face of, a, of professional bull riding, the golden boy. Or at least I was until it all blew in my face. Now my agent says I have to clean up my image, so I'm stuck with this ball-busting daughter for the rest of the season as my full-time supervision. But I don't need a goddamn babysitter, especially one with skin-tight jeans, a sexy smirk, and a mouth she can't stop running. A mouth I can't stop thinking about because Summer isn't just another conquest. She sees the man behind the mask and she doesn't run. She pulls me closer even when she shouldn't. She says this means nothing, but I say this means everything. She says there are boundaries we shouldn't cross, that my reputation can't take any more hits, and neither can her damaged heart. I say I'm going to steal it all away. Now, you're probably thinking, Teresa, I never thought you were. I love me a good cowboy romance. Cowboy romances are very fun for me. I play them an episode that I really enjoyed. I like watching them. I like reading them. Probably like, it's just a very fun time for me. So it's no surprise that I would like, I'm drawn to this one. I also know that my friend Lisa really enjoyed the first one of this series. So I'm very stoked to see. I have a friend who read the second book by accident and she really enjoys that. So, very intrigued to see how I'm going to feel. I'm very excited. It should be a good time. The next one is One Year Ago in Spain by Evelyn Skye. This is, um, I guess I'll just read the description because it's been a habit. Claire Walker has, al has always had her life in perfect order, including her high-powered job at one of Manhattan's top corporate law firms. Mm. Yet the one thing she can't seem to find is a perfect love to complete it until f it, uh, to complete it until fate pushes Matthias de Leon into her path. Matthias is a Spanish artist who is everything Claire is not. Free-spirited and creative, chaos to her order. She falls for him hard and he for her. A year later, however, Claire begins to question everything about their relationship. How can they possibly make it work long-term when they're so different? Might it be best to end it before they are in too deep? Then tragedy strikes when Matthias is visiting his family, leaving him gravely wounded in a Madrid hospital. And when Claire drops everything to race to his side, she finds she is the only one who can see and talk to Matthias' soul detached from his comatose body. But that soul has no memories of his year in New York, of her, or of their relationship. Claire soon realizes that in order to lure Matthias back to his body, she will have to convince him to fall in love with her all over again. But can lightning strike twice? Can the same magic that brought them together once do so again? I'm really intrigued by this just by like the magical aspect of things. It, it's like a weird mix of Ashley Poston's The Dead Romantics um, and then Kiss by an Angel, Kiss by an Angel. That like trilogy or like that volume set, it reminds me of like a nice mix of that and I just really am intrigued by it. So hopefully I'll enjoy it because then I can add it to a weird comatose angel ghost situation that I seem to really enjoy apparently, apparently. The next one is Love on the Second Read by Mika de Leon. This one um, is a workplace romance. It says, Emma Morales, a tenacious romance book editor and proud cat lady, knows romance, but love, nope. Thank you very much. And her nerdy sci-fi and fantasy editor, Kip Alegre, who quotes J.R.R. Tolkien for breakfast and knows heartbreak all too well. When Emma gets a career-changing sci-fi romance manuscript, which may just save their publishing house from folding, she knows she must work with Kip if she wants to succeed. Sounds simple enough, right? But when well-meaning, meddling boy best friends and an obsessive ex-boyfriend and a beautiful ex-fiancé come into the picture, the job doesn't seem too simple anymore. What starts out as a friendly, flirty, literary smackdown between Emma and Kip grows into something deeper for, than either of them had signed up for. The deal was to edit the book, not their lives. Emma and Kip may be willing to read the manuscript over and over again, but will, be they, will they be willing to give love a second read? This sounds like a 2000s rom-com that would have had young Therese wanting to move to New York to become a book editor or a journalist where she gets to wear her cute little heels um, and like run across the streets before finding out that that's not reality and it's not really New York. But it's just giving those vibes and I'm really excited to see. I love books about books. 
I loved Beach Read because it was about books. I loved Dead Romantics because it had books in it and it was just like one of my favorite subgenres are books about books. It's just great. I love the I love seeing how people write write their writing process, the characters writing process and how it's different for each it's just a fun time for me so I'm very intrigued by this. I'll keep y'all posted. The next one is I think a YA I want to say. Yes, YA. And that is Something More by Jackie Kalilie. This is a Palestinian author. This is about a Palestinian Canadian girl who's trying to hide her autism. 15 year old Jessie, a quirky loner obsessed with the 90s, is diagnosed as, an, as autistic just weeks before starting high school. Determined to make a fresh start and keep her diagnosis a secret, Jessie creates a list of goals that range from acquiring two distinct eyebrows to getting a magical first kiss and landing the spot in a school play. Within the halls of Holy Trinity High, she finds word, a world where, there are no, where things are no longer black and white and quickly learns that living in color is much more fun. But Jessie gets more than she bargained for when two very different boys steal her heart, forcing her to go off script. This just sounds really cute, I'm not gonna lie. I love like quirky, I won't say quirky. I love those like callbacks to the 2010s where everything had a, a, a love triangle whether you wanted it to or not and it was just great and it was fun and I like the high school aspect of it. I miss reading YA books in high school where there's just angst and romance and just people trying to figure out their lives. So I'm very intrigued by this and hopefully um, this author ends up on my like authors to keep an eye out for, favorite authors of all time maybe. So. We'll see. The next one is one I've mentioned a couple of times on this channel just because I haven't had a chance to read it yet. And that is Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier. This is an adult romance and it's about, um, well I guess it's following after a public meltdown over her breakup from her cheating musician boyfriend. Cherie swore off guys in the music industry and dating in general for a while, preferring to focus on growing her pastry chef business. When Cherise's younger sister reveals she's getting married in a few months, Cherise hopes that will distract her mother enough to quit, her, to quit harassing her about finding a guy, settling down, and having kids. But her mother's matchmaking keeps intensifying. Charisse tries to humor her mother, hoping if she feigns interest in the eligible bachelor she keeps tossing her way, she'll be off the hook. But things don't go quite as planned. Turns out for the first time in ages, she and Kieran King, the most annoying man ever, are on the same island at the same time. Avoiding him is impossible, especially when Kieran's close friend is the one marrying her sister and he's the best man to her maid of honor. Kieran doesn't know what to make of Charisse now. They've always butted heads. To him, she's always been a stuck-up brat who seeks attention, even while he secretly harbored a crush on her. Now, was Charisse's, Charisse's sister marrying one of his good friends? He can't escape her as the wedding activities keep throwing them together. When things turn heated after a rainy night of bedroom fun, they both have to figure out if they can survive the countdown to wedding day without turning this into a disaster. I fell in love with the cover of this book. And then to boot, we have a pastry chef and an island and a wedding. And it just sounds like the perfect kind of like rom-com vibe that I'm looking for in books. Where it's just very fun. It's lighthearted. There's going to be some angst. There's going to be some moments where you're like, ooh. But you're going to have a lot of fun reading it. And I love illustrated covers like this. I love the color. I love the background. We need more illustrated covers with more detailed backgrounds. So I want to get my hands on this like ASAP. The next one is Read Between the Lines by Rachel Lacey. This is um, another adult romance. Books are Rosie Taft's life and ever since she took over her mother's beloved Manhattan bookstore they've become her home too. The only thing missing is her own real life romance like the one she loves to read about and Rosie has an idea of who, of who she might like to sweep off her feet but she struck up a flirty online relationship with a lesbian romance author Brie and what could be more romantic than falling in love with her favorite author? Jane Breslin works hard to keep her professional, per, professional and personal lives neatly separated. By day, she works for the family property business development business. By night, she puts her senior site on paper under her pen name, Brie. Jane hasn't had much luck with her own love life, but her online connection with the loyal reader makes Jane wonder if she could be the one. When, Lo when, Losey, when Rosie learns her family's bookstore lease has been terminated by Jane's family business, romance moves to the back burner. Even though they're at odds, there's no, there's no denying the sparks that fly every time they're together. When their online identities are revealed, will Jane be able to write her way to a happy ending? Or is Rosie's heart a closed book? Again, one of my favorite things in romance is that they own a bookstore or a bakery or just like some shop that I wish I could own. So this sounds really cute. It's a nice queer romance. 
always a plus side um hoping to add more queer romances to my shelves just for the sake of i really enjoy them <laughs> so really intrigued to see how this goes i'm really excited i'm really hoping i'm gonna like this i, li I like a good rivals to, to lovers kind of scenario so this sounds like a lot of fun the second to last book is Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfler. If you guys haven't heard me say the, this name a bunch of times, she became one of my favorite books of, or author, she was one of the books of my favorite, she was one of the authors of my favorite books of 2023. I think this is her debut, I want to say. Could be wrong. But it's a YA romance and it's like another like spin-off trilogy scenario here. After disastrous blind date, Darcy Lowell is desperate to stop her well-meaning brother from playing matchmaker ever again. Love and the inevitable heartbreak is the last thing she wants. So she fibs and says her latest setup is a success. Darcy doesn't expect her lie to bite her in the ass. Maybe this is a... adult. It's adult. Excuse me. Elle Jones, one of the astrologers behind the popular Twitter account Oh My Stars, dreams of finding her soulmate, but she knows it is most assuredly not Darcy, a no-nonsense stick in the mud who is way too analytical, punctual, and skeptical for someone as free-spirited as Elle. When Darcy's brother and Elle's new business partner expresses how happy he is that they hit it off, Elle is baffled. Was Darcy on that same date? Because awkward. When Darcy plays be begs Elle to play along, she agrees to pretend they are dating to save face, but with few conditions. Darcy must help Elle na navigate her own overbearing family over the holidays, and their arrangement expires on New Year's Eve. The last thing they expect is to develop real feelings during a fake relationship, but maybe opposites can attract when true love is written in the stars? I love fake dating. Again, Alexandra, Be Alexandra Belfer wrote Fiancé Farce, which also does involve fake dating as well. So I'm very intrigued to see about this one because this precedes um, Fiancé Farce. Hopefully I like it just as much and I continue on with the spin-off series because that would be a lot of fun, I think. And the last one on this list is The Summer of Broken Rules by K.A. Walther. This follows Meredith Fox, who has been going to Martha's Vineyard for, this, for the summer for as long as she can remember. But this summer is the first one back since the death of Meredith's, Meredith's sister. It'll all be overwhelming, but even more since the entire extended family will be together for her cousin's big wedding. Unfortunately, Meredith's longtime boyfriend unexpectedly dumped her two weeks before the wedding, leaving her dateless. Luckily, she has the perfect distraction. Her family has a tradition of playing the ultimate game of assassin every summer, and this year it will take place during the week of wedding festivities, where her target happens to be a very cute groomsman. She's determined to not let herself get distracted, but not to let herself be lost in another doomed relationship. But as the week progresses, she can't help falling for him, which may cost her not only the, the game, but also her heart. Meredith's family's annual game of assassin at Martha's Vineyard during a summer wedding is a perfect chance to honor her sister's legacy and finally join the world again. But when she forms an alliance with a cute groomsman, she's at risk of, bo of losing both the game and her heart. I'm intrigued by this. I really like the cover. It's not like most romance covers these days, so I like the blues and I like the premise. I don't have, I don't think I've, I've seen a couple of people talk about this and want to say, but I haven't heard it like kind of like make splashes in the book community. So I'm very intrigued to see how this will go and see what happens. But that is it for the romance books I want to read in the future. I'm hoping I'll be able to get to them. Again, I am in a huge slump and most of my backlog of TBR are all fantasy books. So I have had to go to like audio, to borrow from Kindle, and even to just buy new romance books to be able to keep me reading. So I'm really hoping that some of these romance books will get me out of my slump and I'll be able to get back to the backlog of books because it's, it's staring me down. There's like three right here. But like I said in the beginning, if you like this video or want me to do like a follow-up video, um, once I've gotten a chance to read through these books, or if I ever get to read through these books, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to do that. It might be more motivation. But until next time, I'll see you guys in my next video, and stay safe. Bye!